We are back with a newsworthy exclusive. Jerry Filippatos is the lawyer for that former Fox News producer turned whistleblower, Abby Grossberg, now suing the company in a case that is not over, that has not settled. Thanks for coming on The Beat tonight. Thanks so much, Ari. Uh, we will be here. Great to have you. We'll get to your case. Sure. Uh, but let me get your reaction to this evidence from your client. What does it tell you um, that early in November, Fox was not only on notice about this, but from what is considered a very credible Republican mm -hmm. lawyer and senator who came in second uh, in 16, that Ted Cruz said, hey, you need facts, you don't seem to have them. Well, it seems to me that it indicates that Fox had an objective as opposed to perhaps a point of view, perhaps, you know, just seeing one side instead of the other of, of, of a political spectrum. Fox had an objective to um, make sure that the big lie continued. Regardless of the facts, even when they knew better. Because it, it, it uh, gave ratings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Remember, what's key is that, that Fox was the first to call Arizona uh, during the presidential sure. election. It took a big dip uh, from that call, lost a lot of audience, and then the pressure was on to try to get the ratings back up. And the person who did it best at the time was Maria Bartiromo. And yeah, she was sort of being that voice. We uh, shared Fox's response. They say your client, your evidence, has nothing to do with this huge penalty settlement this week. Your response? Well, I, I don't know if it does or it doesn't. I just know the timing. I know that um, we uh, delivered the information to the Delaware court on, I think, March the 20th is when we submitted the unredacted uh, errata sheet from the deposition that... Uh, Fox had withheld from I'm getting, Abby. I got to stop you. I'm getting lawyer vibes. Yeah. Well, what okay. are, well I don't know what you're saying. I, I kind of know what you're saying. But what, what are you really saying? I'm saying you put forward information that showed they'd been lying to the court. Correct. And that was bad for them. Very bad. And the judge rebuked them for that as we reported. Oh, yeah. Not only did he rebuke them. This is one of the most amazing parts of the story for me. Right. Yeah. So the, the Wednesday before the you know, they started the jury selection, as you correctly said, they had a hearing about, uh, you know, motions in limine, which is what evidence you're going to present at trial. And uh, the judge spent an extraordinary <laughs> long amount of time, over an hour, really excoriating the Fox attorneys because they had essentially said that Rupert Murdoch didn't run, didn't have a role in running the Fox uh, News Network. Right. And the evidence said otherwise. <laughs> said otherwise. So then the judge really let them know how he felt about that. And right after that, uh, one of the, I think it was another attorney, not the one who was speaking about the Rupert Murdoch issue, stood up and said in open court something that I know is verifiably false, that Abby Grossberg did not inform them of the Otter tapes that she had in her possession as part of the job she was doing. So they're, they're hiding this stuff, and they're trying to throw her under the bus and yeah. say they didn't tell. Yeah. She didn't tell them. Right. And that, that you're saying it was, was lying to court, was perjury? Yeah. That's well, serious. You know what I mean. This is yeah. a serious statement. Oh, yeah. And then on the on the Senator Cruz side, I have one other tape we want to play. And what comes through here is, you know, there are people who look at Ted Cruz, particularly with that January 6th vote, mm -hmm. and they look at him very negatively. It seems that in private, he comes off as a kind of a fact-based therapist for Donald Trump. And then in public, he plays this other role. So that's interesting, even if it's apart from the resolution of the case. Here he is saying, hey, there's no evidence. But, you know, Trump's feeling very emotional about right. this. Take a listen. We were meeting in North Carolina and Michigan and Wisconsin uh, and Pennsylvania. Uh, and then, then we saw the numbers shift dramatically along with a lot of conduct uh, that, that raises very, very serious questions. And, and so I, I understand his frustration and, and he's prepared to fight to, to ensure the laws followed and, and, and I I told him when I spoke to him, anything I could do to help, the answer is yes. So he understands Trump's frustration. That's like when you disagree with someone and you say right. your, your feelings are valid. Exactly. OK, whatever. This is not a feeling election. Uh, he lost the election and then they tried to steal it. And people have been convicted. People are in prison for that. This is serious stuff. And Mr. Well Cruz voted not to. to yeah, as we showed. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So you take that back to your client who is who's been there in these yeah. rooms with that anchor I mentioned, mm -hmm. with Carlson, Tucker Carlson. Um, what is your client's key allegation or beef with Fox? And what do you want to get out of this case? So what we want to get out of the case is the truth. And, and Abby is a whistleblower. Uh, 
You ever blow a whistle and you know when you're a coach or anything? Sure. Feels kind of good, right? And you keep blowing it until you get what you need to okay. get, right? And Abby's going to keep blowing that whistle until the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth comes out. Because that's the only way you're ultimately going to fight the big lie, which turned out to be the big grift. And we don't know how much is involved in that. I will tell you that we've been contacted by uh, numerous law enforcement uh, authorities. You've heard from criminal law enforcement? Yes. About this case? I've heard about, I've heard about the evidence that we have produced to the public. They think there might have been a crime pursuant to what your your client, this whistleblower, observed at Fox? I, I really don't know, uh, and the discussions are preliminary. I think it's more that, that the the tapes uh, are to a degree relevant to how what the mm -hmm. relationship was between the Trump campaign and what actually happened on air. Have you provided any evidence to this law enforcement? We're in the process of doing that. You are? Yeah. It, does that include federal law enforcement? I don't want to go any further than that. And it's numerous law enforcement. More than one investigation? Yes. Because, again, I'm, you know, like I said, you're a newsworthy guest. You're making right. news right now. You're saying that you heard from more than one criminal law enforcement entity. They want your evidence. And the implication would be they don't necessarily have all of it, that this is germane to something they're investigating. I would assume that they wouldn't be asking us for something that wasn't that they are potentially enough. germane. Interesting. Yeah. Um, do you think Fox knows about that? I don't know. Or are they only finding out about it now? I, I really don't know. I don't spend any time trying to read Fox's mind because mm -hmm. it is uh, at such a level of arrogance that you really can't um, comprehend it. I call it an onion of arrogance. Yeah, you say the arrogance, which sometimes, again, there's the law and then there's journalists. We, we try to understand why right. things are happening. And sometimes right. you say, oh, gosh, they really didn't think they'd pay out this much. Oh, they really didn't understand it. You mentioned ratings. Right. We've reported and the numbers show uh, this was a loss, not a gain in their business model, but initially the arrogance may have been they thought they would get the ratings and sure. never have to pay for it. Do you think Fox News is afraid of your client? Uh, well, they should be. I, they haven't indicated that yet, but my client is dedicated to getting out the whole truth. And and she has, just to take just 30 seconds, she has significant claims on her of her own. Mm -hmm. Actually, there are two lawsuits, one in Delaware, the other one in the Southern District of New York. The Delaware case essentially talks about the civil conspiracy, the deposition coaching, the, hi the hiding of evidence, and then basically scapegoating her, right? Yeah. And, and causing her to be defamed. So that's that case. The, 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 uh, Southern District of New York case is a case of very clear glass ceiling discrimination on the basis of gender, uh, failure to promote. She, when she was on the Maria Bartiromo show, she was she was a, a staff of one. Maria Bartiromo has the number one show on the on, on the weekends, I think, in the country. And because she's a woman, and because the, they view Fox News actually said this in a letter to me, you know, they were in a bubble, these two women, right? You know, well, maybe they were in a bubble because, you know, of this chauvinistic mm. <laughs> you know, environment that they had to fight with. So anyway, so she, so she, yeah. she goes from there, uh, from the frying pan into the fire, into Tucker Carlson, where she experiences one of the most heinous yeah. and, and gross types of, of hostile work environment. That well, I'll tell you what, you, you, you lay out a lot of stuff. Yeah. It's important. Um, I said you were in the news. I think you made some news tonight um, and would love to hear, uh, of course, from your client directly if and when she's going to speak. She's got an invite here. Absolutely. Uh, Jerry Filippados, thank you for being here. Thank you so much. More other developments in what has been the really worst and most costly week ever for Fox News as a media company. There was this record-breaking penalty which hit Fox to settle that Dominion case. Indeed, it was many, many, many times the largest penalty that Rupert Murdoch's ever had to shell out for. Tonight, we now have new evidence, though, in a related story. And I mentioned this at the top of the show. It's an exclusive. It's a never-before-heard recording of a phone call between a Fox anchor and Republican Senator Ted Cruz, and this is from that key tense period in November 2020. And as part of our reporting, we can tell you the source tonight. This is from a former Fox producer who's turned whistleblower who came up in the same related case about Fox alleged lies, Abby Grossberg. Now, in this recorded call, Senator Cruz discusses how facts would be needed to prove Trump's election fraud claims in court. It can't just be, you know, somebody tweeted this. It's got to be demonstrable facts that can be laid out with evidence because that's what a court of law is going to look to, not, not just an allegation.
but actual fact. And so, I, you know, I'm hopeful. You know, I hope when Rudy comes on on the, the show tomorrow, he has some of those facts, and I hope the legal team continues to lay out the specific evidence because that's what it's going to take to prevail in court. Fact check, true. That is what it would take. Senator Cruz uh, was a lawyer for a long time. And what he just described is the actual process. It is interesting that behind the scenes, he sounds more tethered to reality about that process than in the way he acts in his public life. And I'm going to get to that fact check. But what he described there was true. You need facts to prevail in court. They didn't have those facts. They never prevailed in court. It sounds like in a diplomatic way, in that November call, Senator Cruz already knew that there had been no public information suggesting that there were facts to support overturning the election, that he was even skeptical of them coming up short in court. And in a way, you're hearing a kind of a reasoned and diplomatic version of, hey, get ready to lose. And they did. The Trump team lost all those cases. It's a contrast, though, to how Mr. Cruz and Senator Cruz, of course, played the opposite role on January 6th itself. He used his power to vote against certifying the Biden victory, which was supported by those very facts that he had referenced after. Of course, as the senator predicted, no court ever sided with the bogus lies that Trump was making for claims of fraud. I want to speak to the Republicans who are considering voting against these objections. I understand your concerns, but I urge you to pause and think what does it say to the nearly half the country that believes this election was rigged if we vote not even to consider the claims of illegality and fraud in this election? We can now see the line from November when he was talking about facts to January 6th, where he was talking about the message that it sends to the people who think something. With all due respect to everyone's views, this was not a random poll. This was Congress doing its job to certify and only to object based on those very actual facts the Cruz months prior had noticed the absence of. Half the country can believe in the tooth fairy or that the tooth fairy stole the election. It doesn't mean that Congress should go out of its way after an armed insurrection, to say the least, and start just making it up to appease the people who are incorrect. I should mention, we reached out to Cruz's office and did not receive a response. The senator welcomed to join me on the beat to discuss this and other issues anytime. As mentioned, this newly aired recording is part of the evidence from former Fox News producer Abby Grossberg. Bloomberg today reports that her secret recordings were some of the evidence that actually helped spur the last minute settlement and costly penalty for Fox News. Fox concerned, among other things, about Grossberg's testimony, about her recordings, about how Dominion's lawyers would use them against multiple people, including the big boss, Murdoch himself. Fox has said that the Bloomberg reporting is, quote, completely false. The lawsuit alleges that this network was pressuring her to give misleading testimony in that case. Again, we all know this, and it's easy to kind of consider this a quaint thing, but when you testify in court, you have an obligation to tell the truth. In fact, if you don't, you can get yourself in trouble. You can commit perjury. And this whole case is about whether people were telling the truth or not. So it was quite damaging in the eyes of many that this person on the inside who had been doing the work at Fox said their own lawyers was encouraging new misleading statements or potential lies or potential perjury. Grossberg saying that Fox lawyers were coercing, intimidating and misinforming her. That's in the settled case that she was uncertain that her testimony would end up being fully accurate because of the intimidating and confusing coaching. I want to make sure you know what Fox says about this as well. They respond that her allegations in this case are baseless and that she had, quote, no bearing on the settlement. So here we are in the middle of all this, the truth and the lies, the people who knew better, the people who got up after those now convicted seditionists stormed your capital to steal your vote. And some of these politicians and some of these folks in the media, not all, we will always go precisely like we did tonight, but some of them responded to all that by doubling down on the lies and abusing their power. This is about the many, many millions that Fox now has to pay, but it's about a whole lot more than that.